So the fisher is a pretty elusive carnivore. You would not actually happen upon it in the forest if you're walking around. They blend in really well with their surroundings. There are definitely people that come to Yosemite from all across the world and they've never seen a species like this before. It's very unlikely that you're gonna see a fisher in Yosemite. I've lived here for about 17 years and I've never gotten to see a fisher. There's been instances where I'm like, oh, maybe that's a fisher, but it turns out that it's probably more likely to be a marmot or a marten. It's basically the same size as a house cat and it's in the mustelid family, which is in the same family as mink, otters, and pine martens. They can chase prey into trees and on the ground and through logs. They're just very fast and very fierce animals. They have a very luxurious fur. It's very thick and long, and they were sought after by trappers for their pelts. The Fisher's historical range actually spans through the Sierras, up into the Cascades, and then across the boreal forests of the United States and Canada over to the East Coast. Because of logging, heavy logging, and fur trapping, they decimated the populations. Trapping was really common through the late 1800s and early 1900s. And then in 1946, trapping of fishers was banned in California. But at that point, their population numbers were so low that they still haven't recovered. And now, one of the biggest threats are these large-scale wildfires, particularly in this southern Sierra Nevada population, of which Yosemite is part of. The fisher in this area, in the southern Sierra Nevada, was listed as federally endangered in 2020. And that prompted the park to want to learn more about this animal and how we can protect it. And this study that we're working on right now, it's the first time that Yosemite has tried to capture and collar fisher and really look and see what they're using. To find a fisher is pretty difficult. They are not normally seen. And so the best way is placing these remote cameras out first just to see where these animals are on the landscape. We place these out in areas where we think the fishers might be. We've placed a piece of bait, usually like a raw chicken leg, and it brings in things other than the fisher as well. So we'll have bears visiting, bobcats, mountain lions. We get a lot of different species on the cameras, which is very exciting for us. But when we get a fisher, which is kind of rare sometimes, it's even more exciting. Once we've detected a fissure in a particular area, then we place traps there. And this was so that we could capture them and put collars on them so that later we can track them to these specific habitat structures that they're using. Once the fissure is captured and we've anesthetized it, we usually place it down on the mat in order to work it up, what we call processing the fissure. This includes everything from taking measurements on the body and the paws and the head. We also put a collar on the fissure and this is to track it. So what it's doing is it's collecting locations from satellites of where the fissure's been. And then we can actually download those locations from the collar remotely. So we don't have to recapture the animal to download the data. We try our best to make sure that the animal isn't injured or doesn't feel discomfort when it has a collar on and that we're getting the data from it that we want. And once it starts waking up, we monitor its situation before we're gonna release it. We have it in a very safe, secure place in a box to recover from the drug.
It really is thrilling to see a fisher bound away, take that leap back into their home, wearing this collar, knowing that we're gonna get this incredible window into these animals' lives. So we can learn all of this detailed data about what the fisher needs to survive, to reproduce, to forage, really important information to know for conserving fisher habitat. They're not just going anywhere. They're actually using very specific parts of the forest. Yosemite is really important to fishers and Sequoia Kings Canyon National Parks also provide critical habitat for fishers. And there are areas in between on Forest Service land and private land that also has really important fisher habitat, particularly because the linkages and the corridors are absolutely critical to sustaining this population. Yosemite does provide quite a bit of protection for the fisher species as well as countless others. We are here to secure habitat for them and make sure that they have a place that they can live and reproduce and survive and interact with other species. Every animal is important to Yosemite. The bears are important, the deer are important, but so are all those animals that we don't even see that escape our notice and fishers play an absolutely critical role to Yosemite. They're wild, they're untamed, they're special. 